Welcome back to the Manor Entropians. Julian McBain here, and today we are back on the road. Ah, Freaking ladybugs. Back on the road hunting Shoggoth. And while we're hunting Shoggoth, we're going to talk a little bit about Monria. So we're going to take a break from my, uh, my lessons in finance for gamers. I'll do more of that later this week for um, Sunday. But I did want to talk about Monria a bit because, I mean, honestly, we don't... I think this place is underappreciated. For one, for a moon that has such a limited scope at this time, the developers have put a lot into it. And I know I've sung the praises of Monria in the past, and part of the reason I love the planet or the moon so much is because it reminds me of the Badlands in Montana. But I mean thinking about it and understanding that Monria works different from other planet partners. They've done a lot with what they've have to work with. And there's only four of them. <clears throat> and they were, I know they're working off a separate contract. I don't know all the details of the contract. I do know that they've got more, they have to deal with Minarch more directly. Which is why it's all like, all planet Calypso and Monria things interact with each other as if it's one planet. That's why you can apparently teleport straight from Monria to so that person's on fire. I, mean, I know it's a mind force chip, but that person looks like they're on fire. And it's both hilarious and awesome. <clears throat> but anyway. So. Actually, one of the things I do want to do tonight. Because I am, you know, so good at planning these things. Let's pop Jeep. And we're going to go for a ride. Because it occurs to me. I have not gone through the process of showing how you get to other craters. Right, you've got these um, teleporters. You have the DSEC mining camp. The military camp. But it's not obvious how you get to the other craters. So you know where I am. You watched me walk out here. Now we're going to go around, <clears throat> and I'm going to show you how I got to this crater. The real trick is, I can't remember exactly where the entrance is, so we're going to do some exploring. And as my hover pod, to my knowledge, still doesn't have any fuel, we're going to drive the Jeep. Now up here, of course, if you watched my live stream last week, you'll see is where the cultists like to hang out. There's some good higher level hunting there. Well, not high level, but higher level. Things that you'd want, like, ghost armor for. <clears throat> Monria levels tend to swing higher than Calypso levels, so just keep that in mind. <clears throat> it's like all of the, the Shoggoth tend to be level 2. But... They range in actual power. And a level 3 here is a hell of a lot higher than a level 3 on Calypso. So just be cognizant of that if you immigrate from Calypso. So while we're on our way, one of the things I do want to mention is the Monrian Born uh, program. So if you start your avatar on Monria, they have a lot of benefits and perks for what they call Monrian Born. The first thing you get is the awesome white t-shirt with the, the M symbol and the particle going around it. But that's not really the, the perk, although that identifies you as Monrian Born. And keep in mind that buying an apartment on Monria also gets you into the Monrian Born program, from what I understand. 
And I don't know if that's that's 100% of it or just most of it. We're going to shoot fire at these guys. If I remember correctly, there are yogs back here. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was great. See? Big ball of fire doesn't, you know, I'm doing 50 damage at a pop. And it's still taking quite a bit to kill them. They do moderate damage. They're basically giant spiders. <clears throat> so back here, you can see the platform. Oh, crap. Oh, a Delver. That's lovely. And yes, I could slice through here with my sword really quickly, but one, where's the fun in that? Two, I'm not going to get nearly the skills from it. And three, all in all, it'll be a waste of ammo because I'd be doing way overkill. If I get myself in trouble, I'll do that. Is that supposed to say gopher? That's awesome. So. The Monrean Born Program. They give Monrea players benefits. Things like field trips to other planets. In fact, they just had one that was very widely advertised on the Monrea launcher. Where they took the Monrean Born on the Yamato which is the the mothership is owned by the Knights of Entropia and I believe and the Knights of Entropia are directly affiliated with Monria. I don't know how that whole thing works. I do know that they they work together very very closely. Um, I also know that the Knights of Entropia are not all developers of Monria or anything like that because if they were then Monria would have a huge team. But they're basically volunteers who help Mo the Monrians out. And so they brought them all to Calypso so to get all the starter missions taken care of and to explore things and to grab all kinds of teleporters so that if a Monrian does leave Monria for a while and go out to the field to like Calypso, they have those resources there. Because let's face it, it's not as easy starting out on Monria than it is some other places. And it can't be. Because your Calypso has the best economy. And the one thing that you don't have access to it that's Calypsin directly. Global! That's about 10 ped. Nice. Is you don't have direct access to the economy. You still have to transport the things through space, either using the paying the fee or going to Calypso yourself and running the risk of pirates. So them offering a mothership to do all this on is amazing. Okay, so we've got a teleporter platform here. Looks very familiar. We see this style of platform in all the bases on Calypso. You fought your way through the Yogs, and now you step onto the platform. And you're instantly teleported into this crater. <clears throat> and of course, you've got the DSEC mining camp crate, or teleporter here, and you want to grab that right away. As you can see, this is most definitely a camp. It's a camp that doesn't even have tents. It does have a gun, so that's good. But no tents. No tents for you. So this is crater number two. As you can see, this has basically one road that runs through it to this cave over here. And we are going to drive out there. You've got negated here, and I think negated gives a daily. Let's check that out. <clears throat> Monria has eight dailies you can do. And you can see these guys are a lot more beastly. Level six. Oh, it's you again. Come to beat up some more yogs, I suppose. Indeed, I have. Yes, this is the daily. I don't know how many it takes to do this. But let's see if we can't knock this out real quick. But anyway, going back to what I was talking about, the Monrean Born program. I don't know all the benefits to the Monrean Born program. I think that you can find them on... I'm, I'm positive you can find them on the Monrea forum. I just don't know exactly where they are. So go to the Monrea forum, look at Monrean Born. If you're new to the game and you haven't made your avatar yet, I would strongly recommend considering making it on Monrea. If you decide not to do Monrea, do Cyrene. 
<clears throat> and yes, I say that because they're both my favorite places to go. And I want to see them succeed. I do like the idea that the Monrean born is very much... They're like a... For lack of a better term, they're like a tribe. They're born in a really rough place where everything can kill you, and that shapes how they develop. That whole concept really... I really enjoy that concept, because I've lived in places where the... You know, the environment is just inimical to human life. Oh, see, it takes a long time to get these yogs. Look how little I think I've killed three of them. I missed. Jammed. Ow. I guess I, that's what I get for hitting him in the face with fire. Ooh, I'm gonna have to heal. See, this is why I need to work on my... My... Um... My enforce abilities. There we go. So if we have time, we will come back and work on this a little bit more. But Monria actually has more dailies from what I've found than Calypso does. You can get up to eight daily tokens per day. And we have this crater. I don't think this crater is a wave mission. Because there are craters that are wave missions. No, it's just a crater. Oh, you know what? I bet this is the crater that's a wave mission. Hopefully we didn't attract too much attention by doing that. Oh, maybe it's just a big rock. What the hell? That was weird. Plus that a server wall. Then there's this out here. Oh. Are they... They're sweating a yog? Okay. Most people sweat shoggoths, but I'm not going to complain about that. Come on. There we go. Oh, I think that's the wave event area. See how you got this line here? There's the divot. Oh. Come on. Don't do this to me. No. It's just... A place. I thought there was a wave event up here. Hmm. I know there's one in this area. I just gotta locate it. It's been a hot minute. So, that is something I'll do for a, a, a video coming up, is I'll do all the wave events. Or at least make a valiant attempt at doing all the wave events. Oh, we've got friends. we got all kinds of friends. And those friends aren't too friendly either. I'm being chased by frickin', uh... Aragog and all our children. From Harry Potter. Okay, so this is the location of the third fuel level low. Oh, did not know. We'll pick that up. And we'll pop on to the porter. And here we are. And this brings us to the West Crater. Which has a bit more of a formal camp. This is the military camp and it has two domes. And this one I think has all the terminals. I don't think this one actually has anything in it yet. I think this is for future plans. But as you can see this one has all the terminals you need in it. Teleporter. 
is located here. And there's your my, uh, sentry gun to protect it. And then this crater has both the leprechauns that you can tame and the cultists, the big cultists, the big cultists, the higher level cultists. Oh, someone's mining. Okay, I'm like, what? I hear noise. But the other thing that's here is the stables. And Colonel Wang will give you dailies here as well. I believe it's he just does the cultists. There might be a leprechaun daily as well. But this is the, the pet center. <clears throat> I don't know if can you go inside here it says it's public but I've never actually seen the inside no there's no inside but as you can see this actually has buffs you know increased pe focused regeneration it costs you two pet apparently it only lasts a day uh, skill gain pets and taming Increased health. And I don't know if this is you or if this is your pet. My assumption is it's you since the pets don't actually lose health. And then, of course, you can do animal ex es uh, essence extract from um, dumping pets in here. And basically, they you, well, frankly, you shred the pet for its essence. There's no way of getting around that fact. Now, I know there's no the, the morality behind it is a hell of a lot different because it's not the same as this if it was a real animal, but considering most of my pets are dogs and cats, single leprechaun, which is like a little human, and a couple of these Meho Kwans, uh, panda bears, I would have a tough time doing that, not going to lie. <clears throat> So yeah, that's that. So let's go back over here to the mining camp. And we're going to work on this daily and see if we can't get it done in the next 15 minutes. Let's go stop. I'm really... I didn't want to do that. I'm really enjoying the leveling up the pyrotechnic, and now we're on fire. So that's exactly the, the same chip that they were using. But I'm really enjoying leveling up this chip. I just, I think maybe I, I just like the idea of a fistful of fire being thrown at the enemy. As you can see, ghost armor is more than enough proof against them. You still take damage, but it's not nearly as much. But as you can see, the, the progress that I'm making. I think overall, each daily is kind of designed to take like roughly 30 minutes. That would make sense. Maybe it's a little less than that. I mean, there's eight of them. So it'll take up a good chunk of your evening. But knowing the people who designed this, I have the feeling that they designed it so it would not take you all day. I mean, when you're, you know, when you're starting out, you wouldn't be able to do all of them at the same time. But as you go, you would get stronger and you'd be able to do more of them and it would take, it would take you less time. That went in a wildly weird direction. <laughs> Up in the air with you. <clears throat> you know, these yogs look like a cross between Diablo and spiders. Like from, from Diablo. Diablo 2. Maybe Mephisto for Diablo 2. I haven't seen Mephisto in a long time.
We're getting those pyrokinesis skills, and that's necessary. There we go. This is what it's like to be back doing the things from scratch again. It's been a while. It's been a while since I've really spent time leveling up a specific skill like this. Eventually, I'm going to have to go back and do Power Fist and all the other stuff. I really should spend a little bit of head on it. Just because it built up all of the skills that are associated with it as well. Honestly, I'm really anxious for Monria to get the Codex upgrade. Because this would be a really easy place. No, I won't say easy, because a lot of these mobs are a lot tougher than most people give them credit for. But I, have, I feel that it would be... Because at this time there's only four mobs, you could level all four of them up to 26 and then grind out the one of your choice. And there are some that, like, even now, I don't think I would be really good against, like, shubs. Shubs. Shubs inside the cave. They are way high level, and the last time I was out here, it was a struggle to fight even one of them. Oh, we're making good progress on the daily. I don't like how many of these guys there are, and I'm just kind of running toward them. It's like, yes, let's get stuck in. There's a whole swarm of them out there. And that went off in a wild direction. Missed. Oh no, that one damaged him. That was weird. I wonder if you do more damage if it explodes on him or if it's actually just the way the graphic. Global 30 ped! That is awesome! Feels good to get globals again. When you're fighting Shoggoth, you don't get a whole lot of globals. And if you do get a global, it's like, oh, you got one global for the week and it was five ped. <laughs> Today we got two globals and they totaled to 40 ped. What's this? Dog skin. <clears throat> oh, you can't do the, the twist anymore. I wonder if you can use that for texture. Despite its pliability, the Yogg skin is incredibly dense and resilient to cutting, piercing, and even blunt force traumas. The skin of Yogg not only lends itself to their instinct for excavation, but also makes them a formidable opponent. d biologists have been... Taken in keen interest in the Yogg, believing them to be genetically engineered autonomous tools created by the Church of Cthulhu. That's interesting. And it doesn't take much to be worth a reasonable amount of pet either. Better kill him, he was right there. Oh good, I do have a leprechaun. I don't know where the leprechaun went. Oh, there he is. <laughs> I might just name him Julius Root. Yes, that's an Artemis Fowl reference. Ouch. Actually, gonna end up starting to head back. <clears throat> but this really gives you kind of a realistic feel for what doing these dailies is going to look like. Got someone out here with a. They're they're over there. Got a BLP weapon. There we go. Shout out to Alita. 
recruiting the bear cut squad. Now we're gonna head back. I look like I've got I'm doing like the KO can attack from Dragon Ball. It's so freaking cool. Whoops. Ran right into the NPC. What is he wearing for a shirt? That's a really cool shirt. Oh, of course, the light effects don't work when you're in first person view, because why would they? That is a nifty shirt. Now, I don't know. No, it's just the way it. Oh, so I can turn on and off the, the halo effect, just as if I'm equipping or unequipping a weapon. Okay, so that's it for today, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe down below. We are on the road to 13 million subscribers, one subscription at a time, so make sure you subscribe. And as always, if you would like to consider supporting my work, please consider becoming a patron. Go to patreon.com slash Julian McBain. As always, thank you so much for all of your support. We will see you next time.